This is the Scar City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. How did a chance meeting in a nightclub in Solly Hall lead to the murder on a dance floor in a club in Digbeth? Two men today have been found guilty of the murder of Cody Fisher, who was stabbed to death on the dance floor of a Birmingham nightclub on Boxing Day 2022. I went to the scene of the murder and I, I went there for hours and I really want to thank all the viewers and the members of the channel that make it possible for me to be able to give you this in-depth coverage where I try to go to every single scene and the last three stories have been follow-ups to these cases that I've covered over the past two years. Cody was 23 years old, he was a semi-professional footballer and he was on a night out with friends when he was attacked after an encounter that had occurred two nights before. So Cody had bumped into Remy Gordon at Pop World in Solihull and they exchanged a few words and this was caught on CCTV and this is something that most people will have experienced if they're on a night out and they've drank alcohol. People bump into each other and of course most of the time it's just a, an apology, everybody a little nod and they're on the way but in this case Gordon refused to forget the encounter and he set about trying to identify Cody from social media images. He even shared the image to the group chat which the police obtained where he said that he was due to be stabbed up. Gordon eventually found out Cody's name and he was likely to be at the Crane nightclub on Adderley Street in Digbeth on Boxing Day 2022. Inside the Crane just before midnight on Boxing Day Cody was surrounded and he was head butted, punched and kicked and he was stabbed once in the chest and died from the wound at the scene. CCTV shows Remy Gordon entering the building and he was searched as well so who knows how they got the weapons in there but he was also wearing a mask and this on its own is a bit weird as to why you wouldn't want everybody that goes in your club to be caught on CCTV before they enter so as to avoid this sort of issue with identifying people if something should go wrong. During the time that I spent at the crime scene, there was a passerby that actually discovered the sheath of a knife in the street outside Crane Nightclub, and I captured the moment that this occurred as well. Where is it, where is it in the street? Yeah, so somebody's just seen a knife sleeve. Apparently this officer is recovering it from the road. What, like a Rambo knife? That's mad. Is she got it? Is that what she's picked up? I just gotta wait for the people in it. Oh, excuse me, uh, I'm a journalist. Do you mind if I get a picture of the uh, evidence? From a distance without getting too close. That's fine. Uh, thank you very much. Just uh... so the police have just recovered a knife um, sheath on the road just outside the club. We have no idea if this was the knife that was used in the actual murder or maybe it was just somebody else that had got a knife into this club as the security was very lax and shortly after Cody was stabbed on the dance floor the staff reportedly started cleaning up the floor as well. A major investigation was launched and the police spent hundreds of hours to reviewing CCTV footage from the Crane nightclub as well as examining social media messaging. They identified Remy Gordon as well as Cami Carpenter and Regan Anderson has been present on the night and today at Birmingham Crown Court after a trial that lasted two months Gordon from Rednaught and Carpenter from Kings Norton were convicted of murder Gordon was also found guilty of a fray Anderson from Erdington was cleared of murder but found guilty of a fray they will be sentenced at a later date <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So you've been arrested on suspicion of murder. That's what I've cautioned you. At 8.30. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. Getting clearly on the body worn from there. It's just quiet. Murder. 
lots of murders are triggered by minor events, but normally not as minor as, as this. Now, the absolute tragedy of this case is that the only motive is that on Christmas Eve, Remy Gordon uh, happened to be in the same premises as Cody Fisher. And when Cody Fisher was leaving the premises that evening, as most of us have done, he accidentally bumped into Remy Gordon. Uh, for whatever reason, only known to himself, Remy Gordon took an absolute affront at that. Uh, and from that moment onwards, seemed determined to carry out some form of retribution. Detective Inspector Michelle Fergood, who led the investigation, said the absolute tragedy of this case shows just how trivial the motive was. It was the kind of thing that most right-minded people would have just ignored and moved on. But Remy Gordon, for reasons that can't be explained, took an exception to this. And it was a chance brushing together of two people that didn't know each other and had no reason to fall out. Cody's life has been cut tragically short and the catastrophic impact this has had on his family. And sadly, this isn't even the first time that I've covered a case where this has occurred, where people have just bumped into each other in nightclubs, and that's the end of it. Somebody pulls a knife out, somebody gets stabbed, because alcohol, of course, makes some people act a bit differently and react in ways that they probably wouldn't if they were sober. Cody's mother Tracy described her son as her best friend and her angel, and she said that her and her family are starting life sentences that began on Boxing Day. The saddest, most heartbreaking day of our lives, she said. Cody's father, brother and the rest of his family dearly miss him and are suffering a lot. Cody truly never had a bad bone in his body and he loved teaching young children and he cared and respected for his family. He had more living to do and so much more love and kindness to give to the world. Cody taught us all about ourselves and we miss him every single minute of every single day. I will not get to see him do more amazing things like inspiring the young children that he did to become positive adults. We would have holidays with him and we would also go to his matches every week and see him kick a ball like he's done every single day since he could walk. So this story is definitely a big eye-opener to a lot of people because a lot of people go out and a lot of people have been in similar situations and this just goes to show that it's not worth throwing your life away for some sort of disagreement over a, a bumping into somebody in a nightclub and I really hope that this story maybe tries to, maybe prevents that from happening, hopefully even if it's just one life. So I really appreciate you joining me today. Rest in peace to Cody Fisher. I'll definitely keep you updated on the sentencing of these two men. And don't forget to follow on social media as well. And there's also a study that's going on with Birmingham City University. And this is a way to find out feedback from the viewers about how they feel about certain sentencing relating to mental health cases. So if you go to the link in the description, you'll find the form to be able to fill in. It will take you about five minutes. And the results of this will be shared on the channel very soon so it will show like it's a really important study to try to find out what your views are on mental health defenses in the criminal justice system so really appreciate you joining me again don't forget to subscribe i'll be back again very shortly with some more news peace